I came across these percussion instruments totally by accident. And once I discovered them, I did some research and I found out that there wasn't a lot of information available. There is some information available. There's a really good documentary called Colombo. You can see it on YouTube. It was made um, a few years ago. I found them to be very, very interesting in terms of their design and the attention to detail that went into making these drums by Colombo. I believe that this collection of instruments that I bought uh, were made between 1973 in 1975. So I was able to acquire timbales, a bongo, and a pair of congas or tumbadoras. Juan Jose Colombo was a drum maker. He was based in Tolosa, La Plata, Argentina. He began drumming at the age of 12 and by 1963, he was making drums. In 1978, he was reported in the newspapers as being the best drum maker in Argentina. I'll make a couple of videos that follow up in detail, uh, one on the congas, one on the bongo, and one on the timbales. So I won't go into too much detail here, but for example, one of the interesting things that I found about these congas was that Colombo had contracted a wine cask maker to make the shells for the congas. Once they were delivered to him in bulk orders, he would do the sanding, turning, lathing, um, attaching the hardware, putting the heads on, all the rest of it. I think the story of how these instruments came into my possession is quite interesting. These instruments were made, of course, in Argentina by Colombo. And um, there was someone from South Africa who was vacationing in Brazil who purchased the congas, timbales, and bongo. And um, their home was in South Africa. So after vacationing in Brazil and purchasing these drums, they went back to South Africa where these drums stayed for several years. After that, uh, the owner of the drums, he moved just outside of Toronto to Ontario, Canada. I happened to be visiting that owner, um, not in regard to these instruments, but in regard to a vintage drum set that I was interested in. So I went to the house and um, looked at the drum set it wasn't quite what I was after, so I decided that I wasn't going to buy them. But while I was there, they mentioned that they had old congas that they were going to be selling. So I was very interested in that, obviously. And I asked if I could see them, and I was taken to a storage room in the house where the instruments were. Uh, but they were mixed in with a lot of other things being stored in this room. And I couldn't really get close and examine what was going on with these instruments. And they, they struck me as kind of unusual because like, I'd only see parts of them in this room that was kind of cluttered. But I saw the name Colombo and I saw some unusual details on the congas in particular because there was a black leatherette finish on the congas. I had never seen that before. Uh, in addition, the, the tuning rods or lugs on the congas, something about them looked very different. So I asked if I could come back a second time to um, have a look at these percussion instruments up close uh, once they were brought out into the open. And uh, during that time period, I was able to do some research and see what I could find out about the drum maker. So I, f I found out some information, but there wasn't a lot. There, there was a good documentary on YouTube called Colombo that was made a few years ago. Um, so there was some information there. It was enlightening. Um, there was a conga forum that mentioned the congas, that um, some of these congas had made it to Florida 
and um, some drummers knew of percussionists in, who used them in Florida. Um, but there wasn't a lot of information. So I thought I'd make a few videos and show a lot of the details about these instruments so that other people could use them as a resource. Also, in terms of the designs of these instruments, I find them interesting because they're vintage, they're older uh, percussion instruments, so they, they sit in a time frame in the development of drum design and drum manufacture. So it seems that it was very important for him to establish a level of drum making that would be associated with his home country of Argentina. Apparently someone did have an interest in partnering with Colombo at some point to either export um, drums and percussion instruments to Florida and the United States uh, or to set up uh, an, another manufacturing facility in the United States. And it seemed that Colombo um, wasn't really interested in that idea. Um, from what I could tell, he w didn't want to lose control of the quality of the drums. So um, it, it seems that he declined that. How these instruments got to Brazil and were purchased there um, and then taken to South Africa, I'm not sure about that, that part of the provenance that I don't have. I guess it's possible that they could have been just exported uh, for retail in Brazil. These percussion instruments have actually lived in four different countries on three continents. So these instruments have really been around. This is the first bag from my trip today. Mule skin head, the original. It's an amazing pair of congas from Argentina made by a company called Colombo Percussion. It has a, a black leatherette finish on it, which is something that I've never seen anybody else do. They're a little bit dirty, they're a little bit smudged. Um, they've just been really in storage in somebody's house. I'll have a look at the different aspects of how they were made as I go with the video. Um, but you can see that the way that the wood was turned on a lathe or a sander, that uh, some areas are thicker. And these steel bands here, they are adjustable. There are bolts here that you can uh, tighten or loosen. And a handle, a uh, very sleek, a uh, very elegant looking handle, um, really unusual, leatherette finish, turnbuckle style tuning rods, uh, comfort rims, mule skin head, uh, pretty amazing. Oh, one thing, you'll notice that it was a bit, a bit teetery there. There are these really nice rubber feet, but unfortunately, two of the rubber feet have uh, broken off. The small nails that held it on are, are still present, but it makes it a little bit um, unsteady if you try to stand it up at the moment. And you can probably see a little bit with the lighting here. I'll do a close-up later, but it's a solid stave construction. Those staves are, I'm just noticing, they're quite narrow have a lot of potential. Okay, I'm gonna go get some more. Oh, check that out. Really nice color on the mule skin head. They're kind of heavy. I tried tuning this one up a little bit. Uh, before I bought it and um, I got the tuning up there a little bit, but um, I think that the tuning rod threads are pretty dirty um, So they're like really resisting. I didn't push it 
So I'll have to uh, take all those off, clean them up. Wow, the more I play these, the more I love the sound of them. All right, so here we have matching bongo. Again, Colombo percussion, Argentina. These um, are a little bit hard to tune up because uh, the threads on the uh, tuning rods are pretty dirty. Have to take it all apart, clean it up, all that good stuff. Next I'm going to bring down the tamales. The timbal. Colombo timbal. Nice, uh, nice logo, nice badges on the drums. Now it's got the Colombo sticker on the head and um, I actually have a a design etched into the, the surface, probably on the underside. Um, it's got the Colombo sticker there, but along with the etched pattern, it's got um, an etched logo of Hispania. Here is the last piece. A piece of felt came off in the car. <laughs> Maybe I'll just move this out of the way. It's, it's very, it's very unique hardware. I have to line up. Um, this, this is the key, by the way. It goes into the hole there, and then you, you turn this. I love the base on this. I, I love the legs on it and the, uh, the wheels. It's on wheels. Okay, so that adjusts, and then you can tighten that. I'll have to glue the fillings back on. And then, now it's here. Now I gotta be careful that it's stable with just one drum on it. And it's not, not terribly stable. Anything could happen. I think I've got it backwards. <laughs> It's meant to go up there somewhere to fit the curvature exactly. I've got the felt in it and I'm going to keep my foot on this thing. I think it's going to just... The post that uh, the congas hang on is uh, knurled. Knurled, right? K-N-U-R-L-E-D. Knurled. Knurled. <laughs> 